NASA is at the forefront of space exploration. They've been vocal about how they want to carry on sending humans and robots into the cosmos, and that hopefully in the near future we'll even have bases on the Moon and Mars. These missions have only inspired people to look to the stars, and dream about the wonders it holds. It's very likely that humans will land on the red planet within many of our lifetimes, with other space agencies saying they're looking at sending many of us to this planet. For example, SpaceX has announced their plans to send over 1 million people to Mars by 2050. Not only this, but they plan to build an actual city for these people in the hopes that a new civilization can be started. This in turn has got a lot of people excited. Elon Musk stated that in various tweets that the end goal is to get 1 million people on Mars within the next few decades, and that he hopes over 1,000 starships can be built to achieve this. He goes on to say that the goal is to be able to launch several of these starships a day, so that trips to Mars can be open all the time. Elon went on to say the following, it needs to be such that everyone can go if they want, with loans available for those who don't have money. There will be lots of jobs on Mars. This is incredible news and shows how far we've come in recent years. With that being said though, there's people that believe space is already being inhabited. According to amateur researchers that have spent countless hours looking through old space photographs, they have said that NASA have done a great job at taking detailed photographs of space, but in some of these you can easily see unidentified flying objects. NASA has spoken out about these claims, and say that what people are seeing is usually nothing more than pareidolia, or natural objects. It seems though that this explanation hasn't gone down well with these researchers, as they've gone on to say they think there's something bigger going on. One researcher by the name of ET Database recently discovered this alleged UFO on the moon. The object was discovered on the 10th of August 2020, and is stated as being over 25 miles in length. The glowing white object appears to be disshaped, and upon further review even appears to be leaving a shadow below it, something that the researchers say adds credibility to the photograph. Photos like these usually get sent to groups that study this type of phenomena, and they suggested that the object was not travelling at the time the photo was taken, but was rather just hovering. Not much more information can be given about the photo, but one thing to note is that UFO researchers have said the moon is actually a hotspot for UFOs. One such theory used by researchers to explain all the UFO sightings is that the moon is actually a base. On November 14th, 1969, in an attempt to better understand the makeup of the moon, NASA placed multiple seismic readers across its surface and then soon launched a lunar space module on a collision course for the moon. The idea behind this theory was to allow the lunar module to strike the moon with such a dramatic force, that it would send specific frequencies throughout the entire core of the moon, and allow the seismic readers to capture this data, and help to accurately map out the inside of the moon. What they soon discovered was baffling. Original theories and hypothesis has suggested these reverberations would not last longer than a minute. Given that the surface of our moon is covered in mostly basalt, of which would work to absorb these reverberations, and given its extensive presence was believed to make up the majority of the mantle of the moon at this time, it was mathematically calculated to prevent the seismic activity for lasting for a prolonged period of time. However, as the lunar module struck the moon, the entire celestial body began reverberating for over an hour. NASA scientists described its reverberation similar to that of a church bell ringing. There is still no reasonable hypothesis for the cause of this today, and no further information can be gathered given NASA's lack of future missions to the moon. The most legitimate theory available at this time comes from the works of Russian researchers Michael Vaslin and Alexander Zhabakov that had put forward the artificial moon theory. They began to notice that the craters of the moon, regardless of the impact size or diameter, all equaled out in depth. They also noted that these craters generally had very shallow and flat interiors, and in other areas even containing convex bottoms. 
they hypothesized that meteors are hitting an armored hole underneath the surface of the moon, preventing further depths into the celestial body, and believing the moon to be a possible spaceship created by complex alien life. This theory was only reinforced as the mathematics for the moon and its density became an apparent issue. Given its size, location, and theorized general makeup, the moon should have a density of roughly 5.5 grams per cubic centimeter. However, given its orbital path and overall physics, we find the moon to be only 3.3 grams per cubic centimeter, causing the moon to be much less dense compared to that of our planet. Despite theories of the moon's creation coming from the materials of the Earth, reinforcing facts also soon began becoming connected to the strange anomalous properties of our moon. According to some, the moon is too big to have naturally been caught into the orbit of our planet. For comparison, our moon is 2,159 miles in diameter, whereas the largest Martian moon is merely 14 miles in diameter. This has led to a wide array of debates among the scientific community as to its formation, and even recreations and simulations of impact theory have proven ineffective and mathematically implausible as to the formation of our moon. However, modern scientists have hit back at these claims and say there's no proof to back up the claims our moon is hollow. UFOs have been reported by people for decades now, but one of the issues is that many of those eyewitnesses are not able to back up their claims with hard proof. This usually comes down to several factors, one of which is that they're not carrying around a HD camera and a tripod with them when the encounter happens. This can be one of the more frustrating sides to seeing a UFO, having people judge you for not taking a photograph, or taking one and it not being of high quality. One of the issues with modern smartphones is that they're really great at capturing details when the object is up close. However, if you're trying to take a photograph on a phone when the object is several hundred meters away, and traveling fast this becomes very difficult, and the end result is usually a fuzzy object. People aren't usually ready when these types of encounters happen, and the eyewitness will normally reach for their phone. The encounter is rushed and can leave the individual scrambling for answers for what they just witnessed. It's reported that thousands of unidentified flying objects are reported every year, and although it's suspected that a large majority of these can be easily explained, whether that's as natural phenomena, wildlife such as birds, the military, weather balloons or drones, some have said that a few of these UFO sightings are hard to explain. It seems though in recent years governments and other officials are opening up to the idea of UFOs. 20 years ago you would have been mocked if you'd come forward with a UFO encounter, but it seems in recent years the idea of UFOs has been taken more seriously, with the military saying that they've even recovered artifacts from said objects. These artifacts are currently in the hands of the military, and people aren't sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. There's some that have said it's a good thing because they're now admitting we have this type of technology, while others said there's a high chance this object will be locked away, and that no further information will be released about it. Others have also said that these materials might try to be replicated by scientists, in the hopes that we can create crafts similar to it. As of right now though, it's interesting that the military and governments are being more open to the idea of UFOs. So what do you make of the idea that UFOs can be seen on the moon? Do you think that these photographs are genuine, or just a case of pareidolia? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.